Well, guys, it's a beautiful day. Somewhat beautiful day. The wind's blowing like crazy. The wind's going to keep blowing like crazy, I have a feeling. <coughs> I'm trying to find out if this, uh, if I'm tilting my head or not. <clears throat> I don't know. I won't know till I edit the video. I don't have the visor down right now. I got to get prepared for winter because fall is coming. The cold is well on its way. And when the cold gets here, it's I'm going to be wearing my full face helmet more and more. So I have to be prepared for that because winter's coming. And there's the wind. So closing the helmet. I have to say, I stopped to look at helmets the other day, and holy shit, I was thinking about buying a new full face helmet, but no, absolutely not. Do you know how much they want for a full face helmet? I mean, have you priced them lately? I was looking at just a regular HJC, which is what I'm wearing now, my full face helmet, and it was not, it, I gotta be honest, there really wasn't any difference between that one and this one, except the price. I could not believe how much they wanted for a full face helmet. 600 fucking dollars. Are you kidding me? Two years ago, when I bought this helmet, it was $130. 130 bucks. Now they're 600? That's ridiculous. That's just stupid. I'm not paying $600 for a helmet. I'll buy a helmet off Amazon before I pay $600 bucks for a fucking helmet. That open face helmet I have, I bought off Amazon. It fits like a glove. It's fine. It does everything I need it to do. And it was... It was... Uh, DOT approved. And it was $68. So, I will buy a helmet off Amazon before I pay $600 for a damn helmet. And it's crazy because the guy told me, he says, you know, sometimes we have a 50% off sale. And I was like, great, I'm still not paying $300 for a damn helmet. I'm sorry, but when it's exactly the same helmet that I just bought a couple years ago for $130, even $300 is too much. I'm not paying that. And I'm sure as hell not going to pay $600. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just stupid. Talk about price gouging. Huh. That's like the worst kind of price gouging. And it's all about the you know the technology well this one has the cutout for the for the bluetooth thing to go in it i don't care i don't need the cutout i can put a bluetooth on any helmet that i want to i don't need the cutout for that my bluetooth devices just go on the side of the helmet i don't need a special cutout to put a bluetooth device in and then not only that, you have to buy the one Bluetooth device that fits in that cutout. And that Bluetooth device costs over $400. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. I buy $50 Bluetooth devices that I can put on any helmet and they work just fine. I'm not going to pay $600 for a helmet and then have to buy a specific Bluetooth device for $400 to put in that helmet because they have the cutout on the side for it. 
No, I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous. So I went old school on my GPS. I think you saw that in the last video. I went old school on it. And I like it better. I think the reason I'm getting so frustrated with the GPS is because it's constantly fucking talking in my ear and it won't shut up. I can look down at it when I'm using it. I'm not using it right now. I can look down at it while I'm using it. And I did that for the longest time. You'll notice when I first started this business, when I first started making videos about starting my business and stuff, I didn't use the Bluetooth on the helmet. I just looked at the GPS. And even though it's a little nerve-wracking looking at the GPS, when you're in traffic, you're looking down constantly to see where your next turn is and stuff. I don't have to sit here and stare at it like this. I can glance at it and look right back up again. But that was the main reason I was wanting to use the Bluetooth, was so I wasn't looking at my phone so much. But honestly, it's better for me to just look at the phone. I don't know if I'll even put a Bluetooth in this helmet. Well, I might, because... I can actually just turn the Bluetooth off on that phone and not listen to the GPS, but that way I can still take a phone call if I need to. Because I do have customers call me while I'm riding the bike and it sucks when I have to pull over to answer the phone or I have to pull over to uh, call a customer back or something. It's better if I can just answer the phone while I'm riding, go that route with it. Man, this wind is horrific. We've been dealing with some wind this year, I'll tell you. Um, it's better if I can answer the phone while I'm riding and talk to a customer and just tell them to text me their information. But since I'm using two phones now, because the GPS on the 4G phone works so much better, I just like it a lot better and it doesn't interfere with my phone calls or text messages or anything else so I'm just happier this way beautiful car look at that shit guys that is beautiful absolutely gorgeous how often do you get to see something like that going past you? It's gorgeous. So I got to go fuel up the bike. I got more jobs to do. This is a Saturday. And of course I'm working. And tomorrow's Sunday and I have a bunch more work to do tomorrow. For people that wouldn't let me get to them during the week for one reason or another. They just want me to do it on Sunday. I schedule jobs for Sunday because right now is money season. And I gotta tell you guys, it is so nice to not have to look to see if I have enough money in the bank for a bill that's coming out of my account. So I have a couple of things on auto pay, that's my phone and my insurance, those are the only two things I have on auto pay, and it's so nice when the 16th of the month rolls around and I just know the money's there, I don't have to look, I don't have to go, oh fuck, I gotta go make money today, I gotta pay my phone bill, you know, it's nice to know that the money's already there. And that bill can just get paid. I don't even have to think twice about it. I don't have to stress about it or anything else. It's nice to know I can go on the computer and just pay a credit card bill without having to look at my bank account first. Now, that's not to say that I'm rich or anything, but that's to say that that $1,000 a month I'm saving by not paying for the gold wing and the insurance has really opened me up to a lot less stress and a lot more happiness, I'm telling you. I am so fucking happy to just be able to go online and pay a bill and not think twice about it.
or not have to sit there and go shit you know I got this credit card com payment coming up in two days and I'm a hundred dollars short I gotta get out people see that stress on your face when you're trying to get work people see that stress in you you don't think they do but they see that you're stressed out and that stresses them out and then they don't want to deal with you so ever since I gave up the gold ring I've been getting more work because I'm not stressing all the time I'm actually fucking happy and people can see that in me in my expressions and shit like that so it makes a big difference when it comes to getting more work and I've started to realize that may be why rich people are rich is because once they got past that stress and they were able to actually start paying their bills without stressing all the time and they got over that stress and they were able to build up a bigger clientele list because they weren't stressed all the time and people weren't reading that stress in their face and not giving them the work they needed because I'm telling you right now I'm seeing it the less stress I have the happier I am the more customers I get and the happier my customers are and it's a beautiful thing to just know that when I go out and talk to people, I'm going to get more work because I'm actually happy, really happy. I'm not putting on a false front. I'm not pretending to be happy because, believe it or not, people can see that in your expressions as well. You can pretend you're happy and people can still see that you're fucking miserable or that you're stressed out. No matter how hard you pretend, people can still see that you're stressed out because you, you can't fake happiness. You can't fake being in a good mood. You can't fake that you're actually enjoying your life. You can't fake any of that. It's unfakeable. You actually have to be happy and, in, and be enjoying your life in order for people to see that in you. You can't fake it. And that's something that I have just recently learned about myself. Because once I got rid of that gold wing payment, and I'm not stressing constantly, I'm actually freaking happy. I mean truly happy because I'm not stressing about that monthly payment and insurance and everything else and I'm actually truly happy and people can see that in me so I've gone 202 miles I, I think I still have about a gallon of fuel left which would probably get me another 50 miles but I average if I let this start flashing it would be at about 250 so I average about 250 for a tank. And we'll see how much fuel it takes. But I'm going to shut you off for a second because I don't want to have to block out my credit card number and shit. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again. Now again, I'm using mid-grade. We're going to see how much it takes. We'll figure out my mileage real quick. I've had a lot of highway this week or this last few days I've had a lot of highway interstate so I'm probably not getting as good a fuel mileage as I would if I was just riding around town but we're gonna find out for sure because you know we wanna know this shit we wanna know how much fuel I've used so we know this is a six gallon tank we know that each dot represents a gallon of fuel that's a fact because there's six dots and I was down to the last dot and I put it right up to the bottom of that ring I don't put it over the top of that ring but I put it right up to the bottom of that ring and that is four gallons four gallons look at that four gallons of fuel 
4.05, so we're just going to say 4 gallons because 0.05 is like a, a half of a, it's like a tenth of a gallon or something like that, so it's 4.05 gallons, so let's, uh, oh yeah, no receipt. So we were at what? What were we at? 202. So 202.4 divided by 4.058. 4.058. There we go. 49, 49.87 miles per gallon. What do you think? Pretty badass, right? I told you I was averaging between 49 and 51. Now we'll reset the mileage trip meter again. And we'll head for the house. I haven't had breakfast yet. And it's 11 o'clock. And I haven't had breakfast yet. And I'm, and I'm hungry. I'm only eating one meal a day. And I'm... I'm eating a lot of protein, very little fat, no carbs, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm exercising like crazy, I'm sore as hell, my body needs protein in order to rebuild those muscles when they tear them up, and I want my body to burn my fat for energy, not fat that I'm eating. And I don't want my body to burn carbs for energy. I want it to burn my fat. Because I'm, I'm really sticking to my diet. And it's difficult, but I am really, really sticking to my diet hard right now. And I'm exercising to the point where my whole body is sore. I feel like right now... I feel like I used to feel when I was doing tree service work and I would take a few months off for the winter and then start up again in the spring and as soon as I would start working again in the spring I would be sore as hell for about a month in the spring because all those muscles didn't get used for you know three or four months I would just be sore as hell for a month because I'm starting to use those muscles again and that's how I feel doing my exercise program right now because my muscles haven't really been used for seven years and I have to tell you the biggest enemy your biggest enemy if you're starting an exercise program and a diet program your biggest enemy is that fucking scale stay off of it so, when you, before you start your exercise and diet program, get your base weight, and then don't touch that fucking scale again. Measure your waist, things like that, do some measurements, and don't get on that fucking scale again un until 90 days has gone by, until you've exercised and dieted for at least 90 days, and I'll tell you why. That scale is your biggest enemy because muscle weighs more than fat so if you're sticking to your diet and you're at a calorie deficit you know you're going to burn fat if you're exercising you know you're going to build muscle muscle weighs more than fat so as you lose fat and gain muscle you might actually gain weight and it's a mind fuck when you think you're doing great and you get on the scale and you realize you just gained three pounds or something, it's a mind fuck. Hi. Hi. I want to see what they got here. All right, that's it. I will see you in my next video. All right.